What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out some of the top features contained inside of the extension Sketch Plus for SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So Sketch Plus adds a number of different tools that you might find in like other 3D modeling applications. Um, it adds them directly inside of SketchUp and you can do a lot of different things with these. Um, I'll link to another video where I get a little more in depth in the whole tool set, but I thought in this case, I could talk a little bit about some of the best tools contained inside of Sketch Plus. Note that for a limited time, Sketch Plus is $20 off of their lifetime license right here. So um, I'll link to that in the notes down below. But let's go ahead and jump into SketchUp and take a look at some of the tools that we have in here. So first off, uh, one of the tools that I absolutely love working with inside of Sketch Plus is the um, Path Array tool. And so what Path Array does is it allows you to copy objects along the path. Now, note that you're probably going to want to take a path. So I'm just going to select it right here. And you're going to want to make sure that you weld all of the edges together so that it is considered a single curve. So I'm just going to right click in the newer versions of SketchUp. Um, you can right click into a weld edges. Um, in the older version, you might need to um, use an extension like TIG's weld extension. But basically what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to select a path and then it's going to let us set the start point and then select a component. And so notice when I do this, what this is going to do is this is going to basically create a number of different copies along the path. But notice how what this is doing is this is allowing us to set the spacing. So we could either move our mouse in order to set this spacing, or we could type in a value like 20 feet and hit the enter key. It allowed me to basically create copies of these light bollards at every 20 feet along this path. And so remember that usually a tool like this is going to use um, the object origin as kind of the placement point for these objects. So let's say for example, that I didn't want to place that along the path like this. I wanted it a little further off. Well, what I could do is I could click in here and there's actually a really cool tool in here for this called change axes. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to place the axes on a preset point inside of this object like this. So instead of having it kind of on the corner, which is where it is now, I could just click on this point right here, then tap the space key. We'll notice that moved the axes over here. Well, then we could also move this off of that a little bit. And since it's aligned at the red axis, you could kind of set whatever distance you wanted in here, maybe like two feet. But then if we were to run this tool, notice how we could place these with these off of this path a little bit. And so let's say we wanted to use a different lighted bollard. Like maybe we wanted to use this Marshall's natural element or something like that. Maybe something a little smaller file size. We'll just pick maybe another one of these forms and surfaces. So if I was to select this and download it into my model, there's a tool built into Sketch Plus that allows you to replace components in the model really easily. And so in this case, what you could do, right, is you could just pick up all of these bollards right here. And what this is gonna allow you to do is this is going to allow you to replace them all with a new selection. So I'm gonna select them all right here, but then you can just come in here and click on replace component like this and click, and that's going to replace your bollards inside of your model. So this is a fast, easy way to replace components inside of SketchUp. All right, and so next up, let's say we wanted to place a bunch of trees out here on this surface. Now what we could do is we could use the move tool in copy mode and try to create a bunch of copies of trees, but you can see how that could get really time consuming really fast. That's not necessarily what you wanna do. Okay, and so probably a faster way to do this would be to use this tool. And I'm just gonna create like a grid of trees really quick. So we'll just take these, make a couple copies like this. And so we've got some trees in here. Well, what this is gonna allow us to do is this is gonna allow us to select a collection of objects, click on it, and then click on those objects, and it's gonna drop them down to the surface below. And this one, this is a little bit heavy from a geometry standpoint, so it's gonna slow down your model for a minute. You can see how what that's gonna do is that's gonna take those objects and it's gonna drop them on this surface like this. And it's dropping the object origin, so you wanna make sure that that's at the bottom of your tree. But you can see how that's dropped that in here. Um, that's an easy way to place trees, but then there's also tools in here to randomly spin trees. So you can select all of these and then click, and notice what it's doing is it's randomly spinning them, but you can also randomly scale them like this. 
So if I click, notice how it's gonna scale these trees up and down randomly based on um, a value that I enter. So I can set this to have a minimum scale of 0.5 and a maximum scale of one and a half. If you wanna do that, you can use that in order to add some randomization to your trees so they're not all just like uniformly sitting there facing the same direction. All right, so next up is a tool that lets you work a little bit better with materials. And so the way that this works is right now what I've done is I've taken all of these um, pieces of striping right here and I've put them in a group, right? So these are all individual faces like this, but notice how some of them have a material applied to them and some of them don't. And that can get kind of tricky um, because whatever is on a face of an object always governs. And so a lot of the time the easiest thing to do when you get to a point where you've got some materials on faces and some materials don't have faces, the easiest thing to do is just to take the whole thing and just click on this button for unpaint all. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna remove all of the materials from these objects. It removed it from the faces as well as the edges. And if you look at this, there's also options in here for unpainting just the faces and edges or just the groups and components. Well, in this case, what I want, right, is I don't want any materials on the actual faces, so I can just apply a material to the outside of the whole group. Well, if I apply a material to the outside of the whole group, notice how now these all have this yellow material in here. So having a tool that allows you to remove all materials from the entities inside of an object can be extremely helpful. Okay, and so one of the things that we're always told when we're working in SketchUp is to avoid putting faces or geometry on a tag. As a general rule, you always wanna put your tags on like groups or um, components inside of your model. You don't want that individual geometry because it can just be a total nightmare if things accidentally get applied to tags. So let's say for example, um, and I'm just gonna select some random faces in here, um, just, just to give you kind of an idea. If all of those accidentally get put on the window tag, what that can do is that can get extremely complicated. So um, let's say all of these got dropped on that window tag right here. Well, then um, you could be going through and you could be tracking down geometry for like ever, right? It's really hard to figure out what is on what tag and it just gets really messy. Um, luckily, what you can do is there's a tool in here, um, not the untag all, but there's a tool in here designed to remove tags from faces and edges. So in this case, right, we would wanna keep this where the windows can toggle on and off. We just wanna remove that tag from the faces that are getting turned off in here. Well, what you can do is you can select them. So I'm just going to click right here and I'm going to come in here and I'm gonna use the option for untag faces and edges. And so what that's gonna do is that's going to remove the tags from those faces right here. Well, then when I click off of this, and I did have to click on that face one time, but notice how now all of those faces and edges got put back on untagged. So if you ever get a model from like the 3D warehouse that has uh, edges and faces all on a tag or something like that, this could be an extremely valuable tool. Okay, and so let's say um, that we've got all of these trees in here and we decide that we wanna show these on more of a 2D plan and we don't really wanna show um, terrain like this. Well, right now, what we would have to do is we could click on this and hide it, but we would either have to drop it in again, or you would have to manually move these down. Um, and you can't do all of them at once because they're kind of like up and down like this, right? Well, there's a tool in here that allows you to take all of those objects and I'm just gonna select them all like this. And you can select the option for move to Z. And so when I click on move to Z, what that's gonna do is that's gonna let me move my mouse up and down and it's gonna move all of these objects and specifically based on their origin points to a set Z value. So I can just take all of these, I can just click and notice how it moves them all so that their origin is on that same Z value. So now they're flat. All right, so there's another tool over here called Smart Array. What Smart Array is going to do is it's going to let you create components. So we're just gonna call this stair step or something like that. And let's say that we were to make a copy like this, right? So we wanna rotate it and then we wanna move it up. So I'm gonna move it up like this. Um, and we'll set that to whatever we want that to be. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to use the translation and rotation, um, whatever the differences are between the first copy and the second copy, and it's gonna allow us to repeat them. And so when I click on that, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna let me move my mouse out and I can set a certain number of copies 
like this. And so what it's doing is just re it's just repeating that over and over again. So that gives you the ability to repeat this like this. Um, and this is similar to an extension called Path Copy, which does something very similar. Um, this one gives you kind of that visual indicator of what's happening between them. Um, but you can use the extension Path Copy in order to do that as well. But you can do the same thing with stair steps like this. So let's say we're to take this, make it a component, step over and then up like this, then it's gonna work the same way, right? You can click in here and then you can move your mouse in order to see the number of copies in here. And then you can click in order to set them. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. I will link to Sketch Plus on this page. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.